Hello and welcome to another slide video from the Cornish Radio Amateur Club. And today we're going to have a look at parallel tuned circuits and Q. So let's remind ourselves what happens to inductive reactance with frequency. Inductive reactance increases with frequency. A pure inductor at DC will have zero reactance. It won't oppose current flow at all and so its reactance will be zero ohms. We don't get pure inductors very often, uh, and so, uh, in fact, from practical purpose, the um, opposition to current flow will be the inductor's resistance. So as we go up in frequency, the uh, reactance in ohms, the inductive reactance, uh, increases in a linear fashion. On the other hand, the uh, reactance of a capacitor de decreases with frequency. It starts off at, at infinity because at DC um, a capacitor has uh, infinite uh, reactance. It won't pass any current at all. That is when it's reached its steady state. There will be the inrush current as the plates charge up, but after that uh, a capacitor will not pass DC current. And as the frequency increases, I think we know by now that the reactance will decrease, and it'll decrease according to the curve there on the screen. We get a resonance either in a parallel tuned circuit or indeed a series tuned circuit when XL, the inductive reactance, equals XC, the capacitive reactance. And that's shown here on the graph. There's the circuit with an AC generator, which is variable frequency. And as we increase the frequency from uh, a low frequency to a high frequency, the, there will come a point when XL equals XC, and then um, we have resonance. It's a resonant circuit. And we've shown there a parallel tuned circuit. Now, um, as we start at the low frequency and we work our way up, uh, initially most of the current flows through the inductor, and that's shown by the large red arrows there. And very little flows through the um, capacitor because the frequency is low, and the capacitor is resisting the current flow. As we increase the um, frequency, and the curve will start to climb. And before we reach resonance, the uh, capacitor is dominating the circuit. And so we say that the circuit is capacitive. And if we want to have a look at that on an oscilloscope, we'd be able to see that the um, current is leading the voltage. Remember the keyword civil, C-I-V-I-L. That will tell you then when things are capacitive I leads V, and then uh, V leads I for an inductive circuit. So initially, then the circuit is capacitive, and as we increase frequency, it remains capacitive until we hit resonance. And when we get to resonance, we get circulating currents, and these circulating currents make the um, overall circuit very, very high impedance. And any impedance that is there is resistive. So at that point, I and V, the current and the voltage, are in phase. If we continue to uh, increase the uh, frequency, the circuit then becomes inductive. And uh, then, uh, because the uh, inductor then dominates the circuit. At this point, at the very high frequencies, the capacitor is no longer dominating the circuit because it isn't resisting current flow. So let's have a look at some equations then. We can remember then that uh, at um, resonance, FR, um, we can calculate it. FR equals 1 over 2 pi root LC. And that's an equation we also learned, I think, in the intermediate course. 
we can change the subject of the formula to find out what is the value of L in Henry's residence. And here's the equation. L equals 1 over 4 pi squared um, f squared c squared. Now, uh, this equation is not given on the um, equation sheet that comes with the advanced exam, uh, and what I recommend you do is to learn that equation. And similarly, c equals 1 over 4 pi squared f squared l. So a question may arise where it says, um, this is the value of the inductor, what is the value of the capacitor at uh, resonance? Well, there's two ways of doing that. You could take the first formula, which is on the um, equation sheet, um, fr equals 1 over 2 pi root lc, and you could change the subject of the formula, or you could simply memorise the two subsequent equations, and that might be the easiest thing to do. So we had a look at our circuit again then. Uh, this circuit here, uh, if we had a pure inductor and a uh, pure capacitor, then at resonance, at FR on the graph, um, there is no top, if you like, because it's off the graph. That is because at resonance with a pure inductor and a pure capacitor, the impedance of that circuit is infinite. And so the graph might look like that, disjointed, because the scale of the graph wouldn't allow us to show the top. We more commonly see it shown like this, a high Q circuit, steep sides, a rounded top, and at resonance, Z would equal, or the impedance would equal, the dynamic resistance. And we've shown that then on the graph. And the equation for dynamic resistance, or Dynamic impedance, as it's very often called, is L over CR. So RD equals L over CR. Again, that is in the equation sheet that you'll be given in the exam. So if you were to find out what the current is through a, um, a, a, um, a high Q circuit, and you were given what R was, you could find out what the dynamic resistance was, and therefore how much current would flow through the circuit at resonance. And here is how we show R on an equivalent circuit basis. Here it's shown with the inductor. It can also be shown in parallel with the capacitor. And that's how we would see, if we were looking from outside of the circuit, the dynamic resistance or the dy dynamic impedance at resonance. And as I said, that would then allow us to calculate how much current was flowing through the um, parallel tuned circuit at resonance. So there we have um, an example here of uh, a very, very high Q circuit on the left, um, a high Q circuit and a low Q circuit, shown to, you know, to give some examples. On the right, uh, we've got the derivation of Q. We know that Q on the top equation equals XC over R, and on the second equation equals XL over R. And we know what XC is, we know it's 1 over 2 pi um, FC, and we know what... Um, XL is, it's 2 pi FL. So those first two equations simply expand on the concept of the reactance over the resistance. So, um, we also know that the uh, dynamic um, resistance, RD, equals L over CR. So the bottom equation, which is given in the equation sheet, is what you probably need to be familiar with. Q equals 2 pi FC RD. So, if they gave you, for example, a, um, a tuned circuit, and they said what the dynamic resistance was, and asked you to calculate what the Q factor was, you'd be able to do it using that equation, the equation there at the bottom. You can also work out Q from the shape of the curve, the bandwidth at the 3 dB points. There's a curve and 
there at the top is resonance. And if we said that was 1, then 0 0.707, or at the half power points, the 3 dB, 3 dB points, we could work out the width there between F2 and F1, F1 and F2, in other words, F2 minus F1, and the that gives us the bandwidth of the curve at the 3 dB points. So the equation then is Q equals F0, the frequency at which it's resonant, over the bandwidth, F2 minus F1. So two ways then of working out Q um, for a parallel tuned circuit. So thank you very much again for watching.